lives as I. Hey, hey, good evening and welcome to the encounter here at the historic Calvary Baptist Church. I'm Reverend David Riley. Uh, we're glad that you are joining us with us in the sanctuary and online. Um, in absence of our pastor, we give honor to our pastor, Reverend Lassiter. Um, uh, I count it an honor to be up here to uh, share with you guys this evening uh, of what thus saith the Lord of what he gave me. Uh, I'm just going to go into a little quick word of prayer. Um, Father God, I just thank you. I just thank you for another opportunity to wake up this morning, to wake up and breathe the air that you created for us, Father God. Father God, I just want to thank you and praise your name. With all the things that are going on in the world today, Father God, I'm just thankful that I'm still here, that we're still here, Father God, that you thought it not rob you to keep us another day on this earth, Father God. So, Father God, tonight, I just, I just lift up your name and ask that you use me to tell the people what you want them to hear, Father God. Let it not be my words, but your words. Not my lips, but your lips. Not my thoughts, but your thoughts, Father God. This I ask in Jesus' name, amen. So today, um, I'm going to come out of the uh, book of Luke. Um, Luke chapter 4, so if you want to turn there, um, starting at verse 1. Luke 4, verse 1. I'm going to be reading from the uh, King James Version. It's Luke chapter 4, verse 1, and we're going to go all the way down to verse 13. It's a familiar, uh, familiar scripture that I'm sure you've heard before, but I'm going to go over it again. Sometimes you go through the word once or twice, you get a different revelation from it every time. So we're going to go through it uh, one more time. So that's Luke 4, verses 1 through 13. And it says, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. The devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power I will give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I, will, I give it. If thou therefore will worship me, it shall be thine. And Jesus answered unto him, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear, bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said, answering him, unto him it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed him for a season. Actually, I'm going to go to verse 14. And it says, And Jesus returned in power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. So tonight we're going to, we're going to break down this scripture, but I want to hone in on a particular part, which is uh, verse, verse 8 and what he said to the devil. He said, he said, And Jesus answered him and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. Say, Get thee behind me, Satan. And I have my own little translation of that is, instead of him saying, get thee behind me, I say, pardon my back, Satan. Pardon my back. So starting at the first verse, we're going to go, it says, and Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, a wilderness, what that is, you know, we look at the term wilderness, you know, we think it's just, you know, wilderness. What is wilderness, right? So wilderness, that definition of that word is uncultivated, 
an un uncultivated, uninhabited, and inhospitable region, a neglected or abandoned area of town, or a position of disfavor, disapproval, or dislike. So what I want you to know, and then verse 2, being 40 days tempted of the devil. So there's a test coming, or you, you might be in a test already, right? And you have to go through it. It can't be avoided. So you are in this place where, or Jesus is in this place where it's not meant for you to grow. It's not meant for you to live. It's not meant for you to, 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 to eat. It's not, the conditions there are very harsh. And the position that you're in, currently, people don't approve of you. They dislike you, right? And you're asking, well, I'm asking, I'm asking God is, is why would you lead Jesus to a place like this? A place that you, a place that you, can't, you can't get good food, you, you can't grow, it, you, you can't live there, people there don't like you. Why, why would God lead us to a place that is uninhabitable? That's inhospitable. That's neglected. Why would God leave us, lead us to a place like this? And then to top it all off, he was in this wilderness and he was tempted, being tempted by the devil for 40 days. So you say, why, Lord, why have you put me in this impossible situation? Like, you, you know I can't stand being here. You, you know this environment doesn't suit me, God. You, you, you know I have a bad temper. You, you know that I'm prideful. Why, God, why would you lead me here? Why would God lead us into the wilderness, this place where, where we're going to be uncomfortable? Where we're going to feel like we don't, we don't even want to be here anymore. Why, why would God lead us to a place like this? Right? God is saying that this is only a test. But how you respond to the test will determine your moving up to the next level. So my youngest daughter, she, she graduated from kindergarten today. And in order to achieve that accomplishment of moving up to the first grade, she had to go through some tests in order to prove that she was ready for the next level. So you, you, so, so you have to go through this. God's trying to take you somewhere. So you have to go through this test. So the test can't be the worst. So when the test comes, you shouldn't really get frustrated because you know the test has to come. Because in order for you to get where God wants you to go, you have to go through the wilderness. You have to go through this uninhabitable. You have to go through this, this, this harsh condition. You have to go through this place where people aren't going to like you, where people are going to talk about you. You have to go through this place and be tested. And the bad thing about it is, too, is that the test is going to last more than a day. So you're like, God, when am, when am I going to get out of this? When, when, when am I going to get through You've you got to go through it. You have to go through this test that you're going through or that you, that you will go through because you, you're going to go through one. If, you have, if you're not going through one now, you're, you're going to go through one. So when it comes, if, if you're not going through one right now, this is going to prepare you for when you go through the test. If you are going through one, this is going to help you get through the test. All right? So... During the test, we, we can't give into the devil's temptations. He's going to want you to do things that God didn't ask of you or that God doesn't approve of you. He's going to try to twist the word of God. My point in case is when he was in the wilderness and the devil came and he tempted, uh, he tempted Jesus, he tried to twist God's words. He told him to... Um, he told him to uh, he, told him to, um, th he told him to throw himself off the cliff. He told him to turn the bread into stone. He told him to, he told him to um, bow, down, bow down and worship, worship, worship the devil. Worship him. So the devil is going to try to twist the word of God to make it fit, to seem like you're doing God's will, but it really isn't. And if you're not careful, if you don't know the word of God, you'll be susceptible to the devil's devices. In, in the last part here, um, when he told him to throw himself down into the, uh, and stand on the top of the pinnacle and, throw, and cast himself off, off, off of the pinnacle of the temple and let the angels catch him. That's, that's, that's not God's word. He said, and he said, Jesus said, no, you can't, you can't tempt the Lord God. But the devil was trying to get 
Jesus to commit suicide. And that word suicide means to put oneself to death. Now, yes, it would have been a, it would have been a physical death, but the part that I'm interested in when you're going through this test is really going to be a spiritual death because that word death means separation from God. So the devil's goal is to really have you separated from God. The, God. the devil does not want you to be connected to God. The devil wants you separated from God. So he tries to get you to put yourself in a situation of self-doubt. He tries to challenge who God has told you you are. He tries to put you in a situation where you will sin. Like, yeah, go ahead. It's cool. Cuss this person out. It's okay. You can get back at him. An eye for an eye. No. But God says forgive. God says love your neighbor as yourself. So he'll try to twist the word of God because in the Bible it does say an eye for an eye. But with the new covenant, God said, no, I need you to love your neighbor as you love yourself and I need you to forgive. But if you listen to the devil, the devil will twist the words of God to make you do something opposite of what God wants you really to do. So we have to know the word of God. And we can't allow the devil to separate us from God. It is imperative that you know the word of God. So when the devil comes with his nonsense, you can say, pardon my back, devil. How will you hold up in the test? Are you just gonna are you just gonna give up? Are you not gonna see it through? Because God has given you, God has told you what your promises are. But if you can't make it through the test, you'll never receive the promises that God has for you. So you can't give up. Yeah, it may be hard. Yeah, I know the devil's on your back. Yeah, I know you, I, I know you, I know, I know you hungering after the word of God because it seems like you've been filled up with God. And this is what happens too. If you, if actually, if you catch the first part of it, it says, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So Jesus went into the wilderness full. But for those 40 days, he wasn't really able to, to have that time with God like he wanted to because the devil was there tempting him in the test. So after all that temptation and stuff, he was, he was physically hungry, but he also was hungering after God. And during that test time, it seems like God is not around. It seems as if he's not there. It seems as if he's abandoned you. But the, the word of God says, he says, I never leave you nor forsake you. But you have to know that God has a plan that's going to put you on the other side once you come out of the wilderness. Remember, you're not, you're not going in the wilderness to stay. You're going through the wilderness. So a lot of times we get in a situation and we say, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck here. This is what my life is going to be. No, you're just going through. And what happens is we, we give up while we're going through and we end up dying in the wilderness because we don't have enough strength or enough word or we weren't filled up before we went into the wilderness. See, Jesus was filled up with the Holy Spirit before he went into the wilderness, so he had enough to sustain him during a time that he was going to, where it appeared that he was separated from God or where you can't really... Because sometimes we go through seasons where we go, okay, God, I really can't hear you. I don't, I'm not really hearing from you. I'm not sure what to do. I'm not, I'm not really hearing what, you, what you're saying. And sometimes we have those seasons because that's the season where God says, I'm testing you because I've given you all this stuff. Now I need you to go and, I, I need you to go and apply it. Because that's how you get wisdom. Wisdom comes by application. So God has to allow you to go through these tests. Just like my, my, my daughter Jay had to go through all these tests in order to get to the first grade. She had to get the knowledge that she learned, and she had to sit down there and take the test to prove that she was ready to go to the next level. And so I'm going to give you the secret to passing the test. Let me get your cheat sheet. It's in, it's in that verse 8. It's the, it's the get me behind me, it's the part of my back, Satan. The, the scripture says in James chapter 4, um, I believe it's verse, I believe it's verse 7. He says, uh, resist the devil and he will flee. And he will flee. Um, I like the way it says it in, in, in this version, uh, I believe this is the message version. It says, so let, so let God work his will in you. Yell a loud no to the devil and watch him make himself scarce. I was listening to Pastor Mike this past couple of weeks and um, Pastor Michael D. McDuffie, and he was talking about how sometimes you just got to tell the devil, no, no, no. Because the devil, that's the devil, devil's response to that. He, he'll make himself scarce. But if you don't say nothing to the devil, you just let him stay there, he going he gonna to stay. 
You got to say, no, go. You have to speak to the devil and tell him, because the devil has no authority. That's the problem. We think the devil has authority. He has no authority. We give him access. Because the truth is, he, he has no power over you. You have the power. God gave you the power. The power is inside you. But we let the devil, we let the devil come in. He, he, the devil goes around like a roaring lion. He's not really a lion. He's not a lion at all. He goes around like a lion. We only got one lion. That's the lion of the tribe of Jesus, which is Jesus. He's not a lion. He's going around faking to see who he can devour. So all you have to do is resist. And that word resist means withstand the action or effect of. You got to hold out. You got to hold out. The problem is we don't know how to withstand the devil. But guess what? He, he, don't, he don't have any power. The devil only takes what he is allowed. So you have to know how to hold out. You have to know how to, how to withstand. I'll give you an example. So um, Marines, right? Marines are trained to withstand torture and harsh tactics to not give information to the enemy if they're ever captured. Right? So they, they, they have the ability to withhold until they are rescued. Now, I know sometimes it doesn't always end well, but that's not the case for God. God said, if you resist the devil, he said, he said I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, if you make your bed in hell, there I am right, right there with you. He said, all I need you to do is to withstand. I need you to resist. I need you to hold on. God said, all I need you to do is hold on. I just need you to resist. Yeah, I know the devil's pushing you. I just need you to stand firm on my word, on what I told you, and resist. And eventually the devil is going to flee, but you got to hold, be able to hold on. You got to be able to hold on because what it's doing is building, it's building your strength, you being able to hold on. So when you work out, they got something called resistance. You got to have some resistance. So when you're working out, you got these resistance bands, you pull them up, you're getting resistance when you pull up and that resistance you keep on doing it, it's eventually going to make you, it's going to make you stronger. So you resist the devil, that's actually, that's actually strengthening you, that's your training. The devil come, God allows the devil to come to tempt you or, or, or to test you so that you can get trained up and use, utilize what you know. But a lot of times we get scared of situations and we, and we panic and we get flustered and we, and we forget everything, we forget everything that God has told us. Soon as soon as a situation comes and happens, we, 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 we get flustered. We can't function right. We go this way, we go that way, we, we get mad, we get upset. We, 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 do, we do anything but what God has told us. And we forget that God brought us out the last situation, in the last situation, in the last situation. God's like, so am I going to have to do this every time with you? Am I going to have to do this every time? You haven't learned yet that you, all you have to do is trust me and resist whatever's being thrown at you. You got to be able to resist. Just like the man, you got to be resistant, you got to be silent. And don't, don't say nothing to the devil. You just resist. Tell the devil, no, I'm not saying nothing, and that's it, and resist. And eventually God is going to come and get you through that situation. You're going to come in with the rest of the Marines, and they come in there, they're going to shoot up the place, and you're going to be free. <laughs> but that, that, that's, that's how it is. That, that's, that's what God wants. God wants us to resist the devil. Because the devil, he's, he, 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 acts, he acts like, like I said, he acts like he has authority, but the, the devil is an impersonator. He's an impersonator. He's, he's like a person impersonating a cop. He's not a real cop. He has no authority to arrest you no authority to condemn you. But the devil goes around accusing you of things, and then you take it to heart when somebody accuses you of something that you know is not you, and God told you that's not you anymore, but you allow the devil to arrest you. You got to resist the rest. I know we're taught not to resist the rest from the cops, but from the devil, you're allowed to resist the arrest because he has no authority. People who have no authority can't arrest you. You can be arrested by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit has authority. But if it's the devil coming for you, you resist. You don't have to put up with that. 
You don't have to let the devil in your home. You don't have to let the devil in, de- 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 devil in, 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 your, in your finance. You don't have to let the devil in anything. You have to resist and tell the devil, like Pastor Mike said, tell the devil, no, go. Because you have the authority to tell him that. And once you resist, the devil will flee. And he will flee, but I'm just letting you know, he's coming back. Because it says, it says this in verse 13, if we go back to the scripture, Luke, Luke, Luke 13, Luke 4, 13, it says, and when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. For a season. So you're going to get through the test, you're going to go through that wilderness, be able to get through the wilderness, then you get back to your green pasture, you eat for a while, but God is like, all right, I done filled you up again, you, the, the, the cow did, I'm fed in this green pasture again, now it's time to go back through the wilderness so we can find another green pasture. And the next time you get stronger again, and all you got to do is resist and tell the devil, pardon my back. You don't give the devil no energy. No energy. The devil's going to be here, going to be here talking to you, telling you all these different things, what he wants you to do, you just do this. Part of my back. Part of my back, devil. Part of my back. That's what you got to do. You just turn around and tell the devil, pardon my back. Get behind me. I believe Jesus did that. I believe the devil was talking to him, and he's like, get thee behind me, saying, I don't really think the devil really got behind. I think Jesus just did this. He's like, I, I ain't listening to you right now, saying the, the word says this. I, I, know, I know what you're saying, but that, that, ain't, that ain't what my God said. Don't allow, don't allow the devil to make you commit suicide, spiritual suicide. Don't allow him to, to, to make you try to put yourself to death, to separate you from God. Because... You know, when we look at sin, right, we think of sin as just doing something wrong. We think of sin like um, stealing, um, stealing, uh, uh, fighting, cursing. Uh, it's more than just that. Doubt. Doubt is sin. Because, because you're telling God, that's like you're saying, God, I don't believe you. I know you told me this, but I, I, don't, I really don't believe, I don't believe what you said. And that's what, that's what the devil wants. The devil really wants you not to believe God. And then that self-doubt that causes separation because you really don't believe what God has for you. And God's like, I'm trying to get this thing to you. I, oh, I just need you to believe me. I need you to believe what I'm telling you. And they say, he's, <coughs> excuse me, he's going to try to challenge you. He's going to challenge you. He's going to challenge you what, on what God has told you to do or what God or who God has said that you are. And you can't allow him to do it. You can't allow the devil to get into your head. So you have to think on, those, think on the things that God told you to think on and tell the devil, pardon my back. I can't, I can't listen to you right now, devil. I'm, I, I'm, I'm busy doing something else. I can't, I, I, can't, I can't listen to you right now, devil. I can't. I, I, I know what the situation looks like. I, I, I know what you're trying to get me to do. I know, I know you're trying to take me off course, but I know what God already told me. Yeah, I know it don't look like that right now, devil, but you, 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 got, you got to get behind me. I can't, I can't hear all that nonsense right now, devil. Pardon my back, please. That's what we have to tell him. Because he's going to come. He's going to come. But only, only, only if you allow him to. Uh, it's a TV show that my, um, that my daughters watch. It's called Miraculous with uh, Ladybug and Cat Noir. <laughs> um, and then there's the, the, uh, the bad person called Hawk Moth. Right? And... What Ladybug and Cat Noir do is they go around, you know, they try to, try to save people. So what happens in the show is um, somebody, something will happen to somebody in the show, like they were supposed to get something, or there's something that was supposed to come to them, or they're supposed to do something, and they don't get the opportunity to do it. And then Hawk Moth, the devil, he comes, he's like, oh, this person has been wrong. This person is upset. They're not getting to do what they, well, you know, what God told them to do yet. So then he'll go and he'll send a, he'll, 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 he'll kind of like change the a butterfly into a moth, send the, send the moth into him, and the moth comes in and inhabits them. And it turns them into this mean, angry, or person, or this villain. And now they're trying to destroy the city. That's what the devil's trying to do to you. The devil's like, oh, she's been offended. She's been offended. He's been offended. 
right now, they, you know, they, they were told they were going to be something, but it's not exactly going that way. Let, 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 me, go, let me go over there and send, 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 my, send my little demons in their ear and get them to change their disposition. And then they in turn act, and act now. Now they act in the villain. And they don't even realize who they are. And the Ladybug and Cat Noir, what they do is they say, oh, no, they're, they're wrecking the city. So Ladybug and Cat Noir, they go around trying to capture and retrieve this moth out of, out of the villain. And once they retrieve the moth, then they're back to them regular, regular themselves. You know, that, that, that's, that's the, I, I, liken that to, I liken that to the church and to, to the ministers and to the, to, to the fivefold ministry. We see people who are, who are hurt or have, have a calling on their life but don't, don't realize anymore because they, they, haven't, they haven't gotten the opportunity that they think they should have gotten right then and there, and, and the devil comes in and, 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 and puts that moth on them, and now it causes them to be the villain, and he has to send somebody else to come and say, nope, and take that moth out and say, no, this is who you really are. You're still going to get what you're destined to be. We can't allow the devil to trick us. Because what happened is that it, it and especially, in, especially in, in the church right now, because we're, we're called to change the city, we're called to change the world, and if, if we have that here in the church, then it, 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 brings, it, brings, it brings a disservice to, to the word of God. And this was James, in that, 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 um, that scripture in James, James uh, verse 7, where he's telling you to, to resist the devil in your feet. That's what he's talking about. He's talking to the church in this situation and telling them, like, God, y'all y- 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 got to get it together. Because what happened is when that, when that moth goes in those victims, the, 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 that self-pride of that person comes out. So now, 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 they're, now they're being prideful. Now they have the lust of the flesh because they, they want something so bad, and now it becomes a, it becomes a lust. It becomes a lust of the flesh. And they can't get it. So now they, they want to do whatever they think they should, can do in order to get this thing. And that's how the devil comes in and seeps in. Because he knows that there's a lust or, 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 or pride in that situation. And, 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 and once it gets in there, the devil, the devil comes in there and he, he manipulates it. And now he makes you act on that pride and makes you act on that lust. And we can't do that. I'm just going to read this. Script. James 4 says, and he's talking to the church about this. says, where do you think all these appalling wars and quarrels come from? Do you think they just happen? This is the message version. Think again. They come about because you want your own way, and you fight for it deep inside yourselves. That's, that's that pride. That's that pride. You lust for what you don't have and are willing to kill to get it. So you're willing to do whatever you can to get whatever you think that you're supposed to have. And you don't, you don't, care, who you hurt. You don't care who you hurt in the process. Oh, I know I'm supposed to have this. I don't care if it's hurt so-and-so feeling. I don't care if it's hurt so-and-so feeling. You do whatever you can to do to get it. Because you want it, and you want it now. And we can't be like that. He said, you, you want what is in order, and you will risk violence to get your hands on it. You wouldn't think of just asking God for it, would you? Why not? Because you know you'd be asking for what you have no right to. Or it's not the right time for you to get it. He said, you are spoiled children, each wanting your own way. And this is what the devil tries to, tries to, to get, get, get onto us when he's trying to tempt us. He's trying to make us be this, this type of person, but we can't allow the devil to come in and get inside our mind. That's why we got to stay fixed on God's word and stay fixed on God's promises. And he, even though we might not see it right away, because it's some, a lot of times God tells us something and we want it right then and there. And God said, no, I'm not, I can't give it to you. First, first I need you to get through this test to make sure that you can handle it when I give it to you. Because you can't get through the test, and then God tries to give it to you. You're not going to be able to handle what he has for you. Because you, you weren't even able to endure the test. You weren't even able to pass the test. So and, and this is what's actually failed our school system, if you think about it. So now what they do is, is they... Leave no child behind. So this child was not ready to go to the next level. They didn't pass the test. They didn't pass any of their tests. Yet we still push them to the next level. Yes, they, they, they should be able to attain 
this high school degree. Yes, they should be able to, to, to go to college, but because they did not pass the test, they're not going to be ready to receive their high school diploma. When they're done, they're going to have a high school diploma, but they're not going to be ready to receive anything in the real world because they didn't pass any of the tests. So you can get what you have, but you're going to squander it because you don't know really how to operate and use it because you weren't able to, to use those skills when you were doing the test. And everything that you're going through right now, or that you might go through eventually, because like I said, we all, we're all going to go through something. It's, it's going to happen. You're going to go through a test. You have to know that you can't let the devil get in your ear. If you know you're going through a wilderness season, you've got you to be able to have, you got to be able to recognize <clears throat> that you're going through the wilderness season. Pastor Mike been talking about sonar. You've got to be able to do, 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 know that, all right, I'm in my wilderness season right now. These things are going to be coming at me, and i got to be prepared to go through this wilderness. So you got to get yourself filled up before you go into your wilderness season, because there is going to be a season of wilderness. You have to be making sure you're, all, you're constantly being filled up, because it's going to be coming time when God said, all right, go on down there and test my servant Job. But see, Job had been walking with God and talking with God all his life. So when he went through that season... He was able to endure it because he was already filled. So you have to make sure you, you, you are filled with the word of God while you're going through this season. Because if you're not, you will not, you will not last in it. You won't, you, you won't last. You'll die in the wilderness just like the Israelites died in the wilderness trying to get to the promised land. Because they weren't ready to receive what was in the promised land, so they ended up dying in the wilderness, separated from God. They never got to get, get what, God, what God had for them. So that's why in this season, you, you, have to tell, you have to tell the devil when he tries to get in your ear, when he tries to throw little situations up, when he, when he tries to tempt you, and, and you know it. And, you, and you, you, know, you know when the devil is trying to tempt you because you know it's not right. You know when the devil is trying to tempt you. We know it. We can feel it. We, we get convicted by the Holy Spirit when he does it. And you got to say, you got you, you to say, no, nah, not today, devil. No, go. Pardon my back. You got to turn, turn around and look the other way. Because what the devil is, the, the devil is actually, the, the devil is actually beautiful. The devil is a beautiful being. He's an attractive being. So if you see the devil, you, you're going to be attracted to whatever it is. Because the devil, the, devil the devil don't give out bad stuff. The devil going to give you something like, hey, look at this, nice and shiny. For you to see, that, that's what it's going to look like. And you got to literally be like, uh-uh, <laughs> part of my back. Or turn around and put your back towards Satan because that thing, that, that thing, you're going to end up wanting to lust after it because so that's why you got to do it. it comes to, lust comes through the eye. So you got to be like, uh-uh, no devil, part of my back. I got to turn this way and, and keep my eyes on the mark, which is Jesus. Keep my eyes on his word. Because if you don't, the devil will quickly tempt you and have you ended up committing suicide, spiritual suicide, and you will be telling yourself separated for the long haul from God. So you got to resist. You got to resist. You got to close your eyes, close your eyes. The devil come around, just close your eyes. And remember what God, what God has been saying to you. Saying to you. That's how, that's, that's how we have to do it. That's how we have to do it. And, and you can't, if you're going through something, you can't, you can't, you can't bring that on to other people. You can't, you can't keep dabbling. If, if it gets, you can't, you got to tell, if, if, if you feel yourself falling in, you got to tell the devil, no. You got to say no. It says here, it says, you got to purify your inner life. So you got to quit playing the field. Matter of fact, it says, it says, here it says, hit bottom and cry your eyes out. So if you got to cry, if you got to hit bottom, you go in there, you say, hit bottom and go cry your eyes out. That's what, the, that's what I'm saying right here. The Bible says, hit bottom and cry your eyes out. Probably verse 8 in the message. Hit bottom and cry your eyes out. He says, the fun and games are over. Get serious. Get really serious. And get down on your knees before the master. It is the only way you'll get on your feet. So when you're going through, don't, don't, don't bad mouth each, don't bad mouth the people who, who are technically persecuting you, persecuting you at that time. 
because it's going to happen. You're going to be in the wilderness in the environment where, where you're going to be disliked and where you're going to have disapproval. People are not going to like you. People are going to talk about you. But you can't be that way. Because it's God's word and his message. This is what I said. It's God's word, his message, his royal rule that takes, takes a beating in that kind of talk. So when we, so when we, are, when we are bad-mouthing each other, it, it's, it, God takes that hit. The kingdom of God takes that hit. Not the world. It's the, king, it's the kingdom of God that takes that hit when we're, we're not unified amongst one another. The devil wants us to separate from each other, too. The devil wants you isolated. The devil wants you in an alone place. The devil wants to make you feel like you ain't got nobody. That's how he wants to make you feel. But you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't badmouth each other. He said, you're supposed to be honoring the message, not writing graffiti all over it. He said, God is in charge of deciding human destiny. Who do you think you are to meddle in the destiny of others? Let God handle it. All you got to do is resist. You got to with- resist. All you got to do is just withstand it. I know it hurts, but you just got to gotta hold out. You got to hold out and withstand it. Withstand whatever action the devil's doing. We got to hold out. Yeah, I know it hurts. Yeah, I know they're beating you in that interrogation room. But you got to hold out. That's what they train the Marines. They train the Marines to hold out. They're getting beat. They're getting punched. Waterboarded. But they have to hold out. God said, I just need, all I, said, I need you to hold out. I'm your strength. And I need you to hold out. You don't, think you, can, you don't think you can hold out, but God said, no, I designed you to hold out. He said, I wouldn't have put you in this test if you couldn't do it. He said, I would not have put you in it if you couldn't do it. Because that's when I test you. I've tested you when I've been filled. I've been giving you my word. I've been giving you everything. Now I say, all right, now you, you got it all. You got all the tools. Now I need you to go use them. I need you to go use them. So yet, see, you got to tell the devil no. And just say yes to God. And, and the scripture said he'll be there in no time. He'll be there in no time. And you just got to believe that God, God it, 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 it will keep his word, and he will. But you got to believe that. You got to know that. All to endure the test. God said today, he says, resist. Hold on. Hold on. I know you're scared, but you got to hold on. Like, you know, when they, when they go on them roller coaster machines, you scared, what'd you do? You hold on. If that's how you got to hold on for right now, you just, just hold on. Hey, God, I know this hurts and scary, but I'm going to hold on. I'm going to keep my eyes closed. I trust you, Lord. I trust you that the ride's going to, I'm going to get back down safely. You just got to hold on. God said, just hold on and meditate on me. Meditate on my word. Hold on. If you got to do it like this, if you got to cry, because you see some of the videos of people be crying and everything. Ah! If that's what you got to do, God said, do that. Just hold on. He said, and I, he said, I'll be there to make sure you get through. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death, I will fear no evil because he is with you. You got to realize that he's with you. He's right there. He, he's literally walking right next to you while you're going through it. He ain't going to help you right at, right at that moment, but he's going to let you, he's going to guide you through it. He said, look, he's going to be like, he's, he's your coach. When you're when you, when you in the boxing ring, the, the, your, 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 your corner man, he can't box for you. He can't get in the ring and box for you. You, you got to do the work. He can coach you through it. Man, look, watch out. You know, he's, about, you know, he's quick with that counter. So, you know what I mean? You might want to come over the shoulder this way. That's what God does. Like, All right, the devil's about to come this way. You might want to do this. So we got to listen to our corner man. Because God's there with you, but he can't do the physical action for you, just like you in the boxing ring. 
or on the basketball court. So the, the, the coach can't come out on the court and play the game for you. He can help you with some strategy to get through it, but he can't physically go out there on the court and play the game. We have to play this game of life. We have to go out there and, and put the work in and go through the test and through the trial and make sure that we're training. And that training is Bible study. That training is, training is coming to get in the Word. And then any other noise that's out there, all you got to do is do this. Part of my back. I don't got time for it. Because I know, I know what God has told me. I know where God said he wants to take me. And I'm not going to let the devil come and twist God's word to take me off where I know I'm supposed to be or where I know I'm going or where I know I'm headed or what he has told me or what he has showed me. Because if God showed you something where you're supposed to destined to go with who you're, with who you're supposed to be with and the people that are supposed to be there, he shows, he, shows you, he shows you that. And then something might happen. And he's like, well, maybe, maybe this maybe it wasn't supposed to not. But if God showed it to you, and you know that God showed it to you, and you keep hearing it, and you keep hearing it, and you happen to go through some trial, you, you, you still got to believe God. No, no I, I know this. It, now it doesn't seem like it's going to line up the right way. But no, you're just going through a test. You're just going through a test period. And you just got to hold out. You got to hold out until the test is over. And remember all the things that God told you. So you can execute it while you're playing the game. That's what we're going to say. We're going to tell the devil from now on, and when the devil comes around or something's attacking you, you're going to be like, nope, nope, this happening? Nope, part of my back. Nope, that's not the way I see it, part of my back. And we're going to speak exactly what God has told us to speak. And we're not going to waver. We're not going to bend. And we're not going to, we're not, we're not going to, not going to talk, talk about people who are, who, who are, who are doing stuff. But we're just going to hold on to God's hand. As he guides us through this wilderness, this, this uninhabited, inhospitable region, this neglected area, this position of disapproval, this position of dislike. And then, he, and then here's the reward. Here's the reward. Verse, verse 14 in, in, in Luke. Here's, here's what happens. He said, and when the devil ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And then said, and then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. So after you come out that wilderness, you, you're going to be so strong. You're going to have the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to have the power of God. And then you're going to be able to go make changes throughout the region. People are going to know your name throughout the region. But you got to make it through the test. You got to make it through the test. And all you got to do is resist and hold on and stand on God's word. And he's going to fill you back up again. That's the word for tonight. That's all I got. That's all I got. <laughs> um, as I said, I just want to encourage, I just want to encourage everybody to, to keep, to keep, um, to keep holding, yeah, keep holding on. Just keep holding on. I know Especially in these, these, these years, these past couple of years, it's been, it's been rough. It's been rough. Death, sicknesses, financial issues, uh, everything. Marriages, everything's been, it's been rough. The devil, is, the devil is trying to attack everything that he can so that his people will be separated. He wants his people separate. He doesn't want us together because whether two or three are gathered, Jesus is there. So if, if we don't gather... If we're not together, if we're not unified, the devil can run them up. I mean, you could do some bites. That's one could chase a thousand, but two could chase ten thousand. So he doesn't want us. The devil doesn't want us to be together because the devil has the advantage when we're not together. He wants. He wants a separation. 
because then he gains, he gains the advantage. And then what happens in that process, when we, when we, what happens is, when, when that process, we get separated, right? We just give it to me. When we get, when we get separated, what happens is, let's just to say two, two people, two people get separated. Now, these two are only acting for all their own ways. So now, now they're just, they're now it's all about self. So then pride comes in. So it's all, I'm, I'm all about me. It's just, it's just all about me. And God said, no, I need, I need all y'all in this together. It's not just about you. Because your life isn't just about you. We think that our life is just about us, but it's not. My life is not, my life is not, if, if I don't come and do the assignments that God asks to do, it, it will affect my life, yes, but it affects other people's lives as well. If I don't say what God told me to say, it don't just affect my life, it affects other people's lives. That person who's supposed to get something right then and there may not get what they're supposed to get because I decided, nope, I'm not doing it today. I feel offended. I feel, I feel this way. I don't, want to, I don't want to do this anymore because of my own self-pride. Or we'll go and do something knowing that God didn't tell us to do that yet. And we'll get somewhere where we're not supposed to be. God said, no, that's not what, that's not what I have for you. That's not the way I wanted you to go. Because we like, what we do, we'll take ourselves out the wilderness and we'll try to go, you know, do something else. What happens is you end up still getting stuck in the wilderness somehow. You get yourself back there and you never get, you'll never get out. Because we want to take this path. And God said, no, this is, this is the path. Straight. So I just want to encourage everybody tonight to, to, to hold on. Whatever the situation is that you're going through, just hold on. Just hold on, just hold on, just hold on, hold on tight, like them people on the road coaster. Just hold on, just hold on, just like that. And I know, I know that God is going to see you through it, see you through it. Not take you out of it, see you through it. That's the problem. We think that we're always supposed to get taken out. God, take me out of the situation. No, God, take me through the situation. Got to watch your wording. God, take me through the situation. Because if God takes you out before you're ready to get out, you ain't going to be done. God is the potter. He knows how he wants to mold you. He knows how long you're supposed to be in that kiln for and how hot the temperature is supposed to be. Because if the temperature is too low, you ain't going to come out right. If the temperature is too hot, you ain't going to come out right. God said, I, I know how to set the exact temperature so you won't break. And you're going to come out perfect. And when you come out of that kiln and that glaze is already on you, you're going to look like a beautiful piece. But you got to hold on. And that, and that pot, and that kiln, that, the, the pot, and that he's, the, the pot just got to stay there. He can't go nowhere. He's stuck. He's stuck inside the kiln. You just got to take it. You got to withstand it. We the clay. God's the potter. Let him mold you into what he wants you to be. Not what you think you should be, but what he wants you to be. Father God, I just thank you for your word, Father God, tonight. Um, I thank you that it fall, not fall on deaf ears and that they not only just hear it, but they actually apply it so that if they're going through the test, now they know how to pass the test. And when the test comes, they also know how to pass the test, Father God. I ask that the, this, this word does not, does not fall to the wayside. And I also pray, Father God, that, that, that people share the word, Father God, that they, that they begin. Sometimes we, we get the word and then we don't share it, share it with our fellow people. Father God, I pray for unity right now in the church, Father God. I pray for unity, Father God. Continue to knit us together as one, Father God. I pray for unity. I pray for you. I pray for forgiveness right now, Father God. I pray for forgiveness. I pray for restoration, Father God. I pray for restoration, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I see restoration, Father God. Father God, I pray for peace, Father God. I pray for inner peace, Father God. I see people who need inner peace that are on the line. I pray for inner peace. I pray for joy, Father God. I pray for joy right now, Father God. Mm. Mm. I pray for marriages right now, Father God. I pray for marriages. 
Father God, I pray for, I pray for the school system, Father God. Pray for our children, Father God. That you be in the midst of everything. That everything is designed for your glory, Father God. I pray for healing. I pray for, I pray for immediate healing. I know somebody in lines. I pray for immediate healing right now, Father God. Immediate healing. For you are tr- you true to your word, Father God. You're true to your word, Father God. Father God, I pray for humbleness, Father God. I pray for humbleness that you tear down that spirit of pride right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. I pray for meekness, Father God. I pray for meekness right now, Father God. Some people need to be a little bit more meek, Father God. I feel that spirit. That some people need to be a little bit more meek, Father God. Father God, we tell the devil no today, Father God. We tell the devil no and to go, Father God. Anybody in there that's affiliated with the historic Calvary Baptist Church, Father God, we tell the devil no and we tell the devil go in the name of Jesus, Father God. Devil, you are no longer allowed here. You are not allowed to sit in this sanctuary. You are not allowed to come in these pews. You are not allowed to come through this door. I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. You are not allowed in here. You are not allowed to call confusion. You are not allowed to call distress. You are not allowed to cause anger. I bind up those spirits in the name of Jesus right now. I lose peace, I lose joy, I lose happiness in this building, Father God. I lose lose unity in this building right now, Father God. Father God, we would be an example. We would be an example. Not only in the city, but in in the nation, Father God. No longer will we quarrel with each other, Lord. I bind that spirit of quarrel. I bind that spirit up. I bind the spirit of ownership. Everything belongs to you. Nothing belongs to us. We're just stewards, Father God. Don't nothing belong to us, Lord. I bind up that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. And I crush it. I crush it. I crush it like you crushed the serpent's head. Devil, you are not welcome here. You can no longer come to and fro acting like a lion in this sanctuary, Father God, in this building. You are not allowed to cause diffusion, confusion up in here. You got to go. You got to go. I command it. I command it. devil, you would no longer have your hand in a potter's pot. You have no authority here. You have no authority here. I release the spirit of healing in this place. That when the people come in, as soon as they walk through the doors, Cripples will walk straight. Blind will see. Depressed will come sound. Angered will become happy. Distraught will become peaceful. Lord, let this be your resting place. Let your spirit rest in here. We don't, we don't have to come in here and, and, and ask you to come down. Let, you, let your spirit rest here, Father God. We invite you to rest right here in this sanctuary, Father God. Oh, in Jesus' name. If the word has blessed you tonight, um, 
we ask that you uh, sow into the ministry. Uh, this is good ground to sow into. Um, you can sow on uh, our cash app, dollar sign, CBC Patterson, uh, Give the Five. You can sow on um, your search Calvary Baptist Church Patterson. Uh, we have a Calvary Baptist Church app that you can download on your phone. You can also give that way. Or you can come in, you know, and give here at the sanctuary. So, <laughs> whoop, sorry. Um, a couple of announcements. We'll, we'll see you guys here. Um, for those who would like to be here for our very own trustee Ray Lives, a homegrown service. They start on Friday. Um, we have a viewing from 3 to 6. And then there will be a, a memorial tribute from 6 to 7.30, I believe. And then on Saturday will be the, the final viewing at 9 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. And uh, the celebration of life will begin at 10 a.m. And then we'll be here uh, Sunday for our 143rd anniversary of the historic Calvary Baptist Church. And we have special guest Tyrone Whiting here playing on the, the pipe organ that's behind me. Um, so I'll ask you guys to have a good rest of the week, and we will see you uh, next time here at the historic Calvary Baptist Church. Be blessed.